Hey guys, and welcome back to the sixth episode and probably the final episode of the Object Oriented NPC tutorial series. In the last episode, we finished up the base NPC as well as the aggressive NPC, which we have in server script service and in here. And so basically, we already have the, the, the framework for these NPCs set up. So what we're going to do in this episode is essentially just create two different types of NPCs. Because aggressive NPC is a class that we've sort of defined, uh, a type of NPC that we've defined. But we, this is sort of more of a, a broader class. This isn't, this isn't going to be an actual specific NPC. So what we're going to do is we're going to select aggressive NPC. We're going to go to the plugins. We're going to create a module. And we're going to do inherited class. And make sure it's selected. Otherwise, it won't put it in the right place. Just for fun, we call it 9bot NPC. And then the object name is going to be NPC inherit from aggressive NPC. So that'll create a new a new script in here. And so what we're going to do here is rather than having aggressive NPCs, these are going to be sort of um, an abstract class of sorts that we're going to have other specific types of aggressive NPCs inherit from, right? And so I'm going to get rid of these. I'm going to leave one of them. I'm going to call this one nine bot NPC. I'm going to remove the tag. I'm going to add 9bot NPC as the tag. And then, of course, that means we need to go in here or in the 9bot NPC one. So, I guess first let's do some setup here um, before I get too distracted. So, we need the NPC ID, so we can just copy that over. We're going to change that to be 9bot NPC. Make sure that this string matches whatever the tag you made is. And we can see it already like inherited. It already inherits from aggressive NPC because we use the framework and it sets it up for you with the set meta table right here. But we also need to modify this new function a little bit. So we're going to do new, and then we're going to do character, which is a model. And then we need to pass that character argument into aggressive NPC dot new. All right? Yeah, I think that should make this function as an aggressive NPC, but it should be nine bot NPC instead but it should still function the exact same as the regular aggressive NPC. So let's see. Yep, so it functions pretty much the exact same because we just inherited from aggressive NPC. We didn't actually modify anything or change anything. So it'll just do the exact same thing. But what we're going to do now, I'm just going to double check that he goes back and stuff first, but after he kills me and stuff, what we're going to do is we're going to see, we're going to modify some of these properties at the top and like some of the ones from here as well. And in order to customize how we want this specific NPC type to behave. Okay, yeah, so it looks like it works. So for 9bot NPCs, I'm going to say that, here, well, first of all, well, first of all, I'm going to change this. There we go. That was a typo on my end. Um, make sure this is 9bot NPC dot NPC ID instead of aggressive NPC. Otherwise, that'll lead to some bugs later on. 9bot NPC dot I'm going to create a, a, a table of all of the NPCs of this type, just the same way I've done here and stuff, and, and, and in base NPC. And we're going to do basically the same code as right here, right? So we're going to do all nine bots. And then, yeah, everything else we can leave the same. So now anytime it creates a new nine bot NPC, it's going to add it to this list. And so if we want to access all of the NPCs in the game, we can do base NPC dot all NPCs. If we want to access all aggressive NPCs, we can do aggressive NPC dot uh, all aggressive NPCs. Or if we wanted to access all nine bot NPCs, we could do nine bot NPC dot all nine bots. And so the reason we have that is just so if we wanted to loop through every NPC or every NPC of a certain type, then we can really easily. So that's just kind of something that can be used later on. And then one property we're going to modify Nine bot NPC dot detect NPCs. We're going to set this to true because essentially, right? So yeah. So essentially, I'm going to create a nine bot NPC, and I'm also going to create an anti nine bot NPC. So let me do. I'm going to add these properties. So nine bot NPC dot attack damage. I'm going to say it does fifty, which is a lot. <laughs> so. So that's that's modifying this property right here. So we have um, aggressive or nine bot NPC inherits from aggressive NPC, but it modifies this property so it increases the damage. And then also makes so it detects NPCs as well as as well as players, because by default it already detects players, but it doesn't detect NPCs. 
but we're modifying this for the nine bot class. And so now the big, the only difference right now is just going to be that it's going to kill me really fast. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but if we added another nine bot, actually, I don't think it'll do anything. Yeah. They won't attack each other. But if we did, for example, nine bot NPC dot, um, let's see. Detect own kind right here. If we set this to be true, then I'll just run it this time. Now you'll see that the two NPCs will fight each other and they'll both die. <laughs> that appears to have broken it. Oh, okay, yeah, so the respawn, we need to set up the respawning. So we need to copy the NPC model. Make sure you do this for all your NPCs. Um, server storage, NPC templates. We have the aggressive NPC, the base NPC. We don't necessarily need these in here because we're not going to have instances of aggressive NPCs and base NPCs. We're just going to have the specific types, like 9bot. But I want to leave them there anyway. So now these should be able to respawn as well. Yep. And so now I'm going to turn this back to false because I don't want them to attack each other. So now they just sit there and stare at each other. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another type of NPC. So I'm just going to copy paste this, uh, not like that. I'm going to control D, duplicate this module, and I'm going to rename this one to anti nine NPC. I'm going to go in that module. I'm going to do control H. So I'm going to select nine by NPC control H. I'm going to replace it with anti nine NPC. I'm going to check these two to make sure it only replaces things that are exact matches. I'm going to do replace all. And then that also changed the NPC ID looks like, so we can, that's, that's convenient. So I'm going to, yeah, okay, so now we have this new module, and it does the exact same thing as 9bot, uh, but um, but has a different NPC ID. And what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to make sure so this one doesn't detect players. This is going to be like a good guy NPC, right? And so I'm going to attack the, uh, the other NPCs. But then the rest, I also, uh, I'm gonna change this to all anti nines. Do that, and then I'm gonna do that. All right. The rest, I think, is set up. So now, if I create a new anti nine bot NPC, and how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take this guy and turn this one into one of them. So I'm gonna do anti nine NPC. I'm gonna go to properties, remove the tag anti nine NPC. I'm also going to stylize them a little bit. <laughs> um, and go to body colors. Make them red. I don't know. Because why not? And then close. I'm just going to like. There we go. Perfect. Oh, yes, of course. I forgot the hair. This is very important, by the way. Oh, it didn't work. Um, texture. There we go. Cool. So we have an alternative version of the uh, nine bot, and this one is uh, theoretically going to attack the nine bot. And the nine bot, I'm going to turn. So it has detect NPCs too, but it's not going to detect its own kind, but it will detect other NPCs. And so these two NPCs should now attack each other. And voila. But then if I had, so I'm going to copy this guy. I'm going to paste him in. NPC templates before I forget so it doesn't error. And we can see that they should be able to respawn fine. Yep. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this guy over here right somewhere else. And then I can make more of these and we can confirm that these guys don't attack each other. But this guy does attack these guys and they attack each other, right? And so essentially now you have like two different kinds of NPCs and the code for them is like almost identical other than like one or two lines but then they behave slightly differently and so that's the really cool thing about this object oriented program is you can inherit base functionality and then just add on top of that and make little modifications and so now I have a bunch of different NPCs that behave differently that I can, that I can play around with and I can do other different things with so now if I play oh no these guys are chasing me they're gonna kill me and I go over here he comes to help me Except he dies really fast, <laughs> but he tried. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's the idea.
And so again, the purpose of these two modules isn't to like make some crazy functionality. It's just to show the general idea of how this object oriented programming can be used for NPCs. If, if all you need for an NPC is just basic pathfinding and all, you know, it just has like a simple script, you don't necessarily need object oriented programming. Where this object oriented programming comes in handy is with inheritance, like I'm using it here. And it allows you to essentially not have to redefine all the same code. Because, for example, if I made one script for 9-bot NPC and one script for anti 9 bot NPC, then each script would have all of this code plus all of this code, but it'd all be the same other than like one little value, right? And so I'd basically just be copying and pasting that entire thing versus having all of this utility code, right? If I minimize it all, we have all these utility functions we can use for any NPC. And then we have this, which has actual functionality that can be added on top of. And then we just simply inherit, uh, we inherit from this, which inherits from this. And that allows us to define these two types really easily with only 35 lines of code, right? Not to mention all the empty lines and whatnot. And you could do a lot more with this as well. And you can, if you ever needed to, for example, uh, say the NPCs were really laggy, like maybe, I imagine if we have a bunch of these, it's probably not going to be super performant because we're spamming pathfinding. So we can experiment with it. So if you have three of them running at a time, works just fine. It's, it's not too laggy or anything. But if we had like, I think the reason it's not lagging right now is because um, they're not actually using pathfinding. I think the second I did like, if I went ahead, grabbed this wall, I put a wall between them. Now suddenly so they're all gonna be using pathfinding. It's probably gonna be a lot laggier. <laughs> oh wait, no, they, they don't even detect each other. That's right, okay. Um, so if I did like, whoop, whoop. Seems like, yeah, some of them, yeah, now they're like stuttering and stuff. A little bit. It's kind of hard to tell. I guess this is more performant than my previous testing because this seems like it works fine. But anyway, but for example, my point is if you wanted to optimize it a little bit or something and you need to change some of the code, um, all you wouldn't have to change it for every single NPC you have. You just have to go to base NPC, modify the utility function. So, for example, that would probably be in the follow part we'd want to play around with. And you could modify these things and it would automatically applied to every single NPC in your game without any extra effort needed. And so it makes it really easy to essentially section off the different parts of the development of your NPCs into different levels where you have the base framework and then you have another level above that and then another level above that which is the actual object itself, right? Nonetheless though, I hope you enjoyed this series and um, <laughs> it's been, uh, been fun to make and uh, and <laughs> As always, if you ever need help with any code or any development questions or anything, you can always join my Discord server in the description below. And if you want access to my tutorial files, you can download those through the $299 a month membership on either YouTube or Patreon. And I also offer tutoring services one-on-one -on -one for the higher tier memberships. But nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed and thank you for watching.